I traveled basically three years pretty much straight. Yeah. I would probably visit every state pretty much, maybe not Hawaii, but uh, you know, many of the other states I, I visited and it was just great. It was a good experience. And the great thing was I had input in the product. I could do service, I could do applications. You know, I got to know the customers and I, I did phone support and... So that's huge when you're going into a customer and you could service the machine, yeah. you could talk to them about their yeah, application right. and you could say, yeah. oh, it could. It you probably did you install the units too i did install them yeah man yeah, good yeah, on you yeah. that so, is a lot of hats brother yeah it gave me a good insight in the workings of a company heck yeah so when you do all these different positions you get to feel okay you know this is important here this is important there these guys for them this is important you know not not everybody in the company has the same kind of triggers sure and if you need help you know you figure out after a while oh this is his trigger and this is his trigger and then you get quicker help and then yeah and that's how that's where I met Harry. So nice. Harry was my boss at the time. And when he left, he said, hey, you want to be... And, and this is kind of throughout my career. I was, I don't know, I was always at the right time, right place. at the right place, and it just worked out. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't tell you, you know, I mean, didn't do anything special to climb I, the ladder, I, I, but I don't it know. just worked I just, out. Yeah, it just worked out, and I always embraced the opportunity. Yeah, you know, if something new came along, Harry left. It was, uh, you know, a technical uh, lead. It was basically engineering software, you know, for the machines. Something completely different. Sure, sure. But I mean, I just enjoyed it. I grasped it. I, you know, worked with the people. I mean, the people that you work with, they always know much better what they're doing than you do. Hundred yeah. percent. You, yep. you can, yep. you can, you know. So you got to trust your team. But it's uh, again, it's about leadership. You bring yep. them together. You, you, you grow together. And uh, you know, we had our successes. Well, that's fantastic. So. It's like we've all talked, right? There's levels of this <clears throat> industry that you levels can climb, to the game. and there yep. are so many good. This, there's no ceiling. You, can, if you love it, you know, yep. you can go where wherever you want in this industry. Yeah. That's a great story. That's good stuff. We were talking to a bunch of students yesterday. They were awesome and they're all doing the Titans of CNC curriculum and they're up in New York. And I was like, they were asking me like, what changed? What did you concentrate on and and, and all that? And I was like, solving problems. Mm -hmm. Like the, the more things that you can actually learn and the more problems that you can solve, every opportunity that you have to actually do something new, put mm -hmm. your hands on something yeah. new, learn from somebody new, you know, and you see problems. A lot of people run from those problems with the people that are successful that actually make money in this industry and rise up are the ones that actually attack the problems, understand that greatness comes from adversity and then it's just a process. So mm -hmm. let's figure it out and you figure it out. Yep. And eventually people see you for that and no they're doubt. like, hey, they actually know how to do that and this and this and this and they always run to solve that problem. They're never running away. So let's give this person an opportunity. And it's fantastic. I think, you know, for a lot of young people, I think that's like a, a key and that's pretty much what you said was that you learned a lot of different things and which then when you're a leader, you have to be able to have be knowledgeable Got about to. all of it, the vastness of it. Absolutely so. agreed. Especially so. grinding, right? I yeah. mean, grinding is one of those dying breeds of, of of the trade. We have machines, we got mills, we got lathes, we got, you know, horizontal mills, five act. But when you look at grinding, that is one thing that you go into a shop and who's the guy in the grinder? It's probably one of the yeah. older guys yep. in the shop. Yep. Hey, this guy here, yeah, oh, I man. don't know huh. why he's so young and, and knows so much, but. <laughs> yeah. but well, I, I had some very good mentors, man. My uh, a lot of my mentors, you know, they were 57, and then one the guy that actually trained me on a studer was 67 years old. See, wow. awesome. there you go. Yeah, he was way past retirement, but he was there. I want to teach you because there's the same thing, same mindset. Is nobody's coming. Yeah. It's you. Yeah, this is you. Yeah, and I worked my way up, and like he said, you know, there's steps to grinding, and if you follow them, you're good. Yeah, and that's what I love about it. You know, clean workspace makes good parts. The shop is phenomenal. And that really shows that like this is a grind shop. This was at Bell. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, my yeah. A lot of the guys down there showed me a lot. And yeah, I, I think that we haven't really talked too much about that. That um, Chris's experience mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. from Bell, that he came over here and he's running a Studer S41, but he was at Bell Helicopters uh, down the road running right. a Studer S41, and oh, they ended nice. up being supervisor and all that. Yeah. So. 
I'm never going to pretend to be the best at everything. We're going to bring in the <laughs> right people yep. that actually can run the machines and make perfect parts to print because right. that's what we're about. Former Marine. Former Marine. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. Yeah. just got married. Thank you for your yeah. service. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Thanks, no thanks, doubt thanks, about thanks. it. But now, yeah, I started on, I think, like an old Norton manual grinder that has mm -hmm. still had the machine of war yeah. sticker on it. From no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah, it still had like the eagle on that's it. That's crazy. Put it on there. And at first I was just doing like super finish and then like super small grinding chamfers or grinding a radius blending a radius mm -hmm. uh you know stressing in a wheel with the radius with gauge blocks and a mic and mm -hmm. all that and then uh i moved over to a studer lean pro oh yeah okay. yeah, yes. yeah that's nice. why we got Mark is like i know yeah, that machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that thing that thing was it was also green wartime yeah. green yeah. one time green it was yeah, yeah back yeah. in the day yeah. and uh so when we got the favorite in, i was like oh this is like the lean pro and they're like nah that's a favorite and we're like, oh okay same thing though right and they're like yeah I'm like, oh, okay <laughs> whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you say so yeah and then after that um i proved myself on a lean pro and then i was lucky enough same thing i kind of just fell into it they were like hey this kid is doing really good he's he's holding you know sphericals within two tenths you know you grind a spherical you dress a, you dress that radius into the wheel and then you bring it over and yep. you grind that spherical into the gear and i did like 400 of them by myself Man. you know oh, just wow. nobody else would touch them they're yep. like we're not running that part and absolutely not and all it was was this little bitty looked like a, a sprocket it mm -hmm. was like maybe a half an inch longer or something yep. and you would blend that radius and every couple parts you had to get it checked and nobody else would run them and i'd go in there and i indicate it in on a magnet and boom there it is just like we talked about you you're taking on a job and wanting to yep. learn something no yep. one else in the shop wanted to do and yep. look at you now yeah yep. yep. and then you know they had this i remember they had this one fixture you would you would indicate it in with bolts so you'd, you would run the face with the indicator and then you would have a bolt and you would have to tighten it. But if you tighten it too much, then it would do this. And no way. Oh, it was, it was pain in the butt. It was pain in the butt. But, <laughs> but, yeah. So but, did you, did you grind in the service? Were you, were you, did, I, did you learn? I've been anything? grinding all my life. Have you? Right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Love no, it. no, I was, uh, I was in a zero three one one in the Marine Corps, United States Marine Corps. So I was in the infantry. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, but ma the Marine Corps and a lot of the military branches actually has machining and 3D printing. That's right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I'd, I wish I would have had a chance to know that. You yeah. Know, but I was a young kid trying to just escape, trying to get out. Yep. And I went to a recruiter and I said, what you got? And he said, this. I said, cool, I'm out. Jump in. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> had my mom and dad sign my papers and I left at 17 and, you know, really did okay. And I, I think, you know, sometimes I look back and all the things that I've seen and <clears throat> different manufacturing processes, products that came out at the end. And today I go sometimes, I walk through the supermarket and think to myself, man, I wonder how they did that packing and how did that uh, happen in here and how did that go? Because some of the stuff is just, I mean, even just making simple things like cardboard. When I've seen that the first time, I'm like, oh my God, this is like high speed, super complicated machining um, that, you know, we talking about you know you don't see it when you get it when you pick it up in the shelf and you put it no. together and throw it in your recycling bin cut no, no. Fold, you, you, it's it's and the speed and then how much science goes in like just putting how much glue you're going to put on yeah you yeah. know to get this open Truly. or to get it apart again yeah. you know it for me it, it's it looks simple when you don't know what's behind it it you never will think about it. Yeah. But yeah. when you're in manufacturing, you're like, oh, this is, ooh, this is pretty fancy, you know? So, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, so. And that's another good little, you know, just part of our business. You know, when you get into it, you you look at everything we do every day is made by a machine tool, everything, right? Yeah. And yeah. then you start, when you're into it, you're looking at planes, you're looking at cars, you're looking at watches, you're looking at, you know, everything that is manufactured. And I love that. that, that yeah. You could get so deep into how something's done, but that's it, again, we do it every day but people don't know that yeah i for example the new iphone came out huh? yeah the titanium, titanium frame. yeah I'm like, how many more cutting tools would they need for that correct than to, for the prior phone <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know? well, well remember what was the iphone that came out it had all the small holes in it and i think foxconn in china they must have bought i think it was like something around thirty thousand robo drills mm -hmm. for all the iphones yeah. to just drill all those holes yeah. in in those cases yeah, yeah it's crazy yeah. wow yeah, it's super good. Yeah, so I, these are things that, I mean, for the industry that just, you know, I, I'm in it for a long time, but I, I still appreciate it so much, you yeah. know, seeing these things. So.